something a little bit unusual. I, I felt an option in my spirit to take four words from scripture and to uh, make a title out of that today. I'll read them in a minute. You see them behind me on the screen. It says, and he prayed again. And he prayed again. It could uh, equally have said if we were not just pulling words directly from scripture and she prayed again. It could say, and that young teenager prayed again. Or that young child prayed again. Or that grandma prayed again. Or that grandpa prayed again. I'll tell you that when you pray, heaven is moved. God moves. On your behalf and on somebody else's behalf. Amen. But that is the title today. And he prayed again. I have a lot of dreams. Many of you know that. Many of those dreams I, I attribute directly to God. And uh, I think I've learned over the years. It, it, uh, it's taken me time, obviously, uh, of trying to understand dreams. I, Sister Rhonda, I think you maybe have studied dreams a lot more than I have. But uh, dreams are a very important part of, of my life. That may sound a little bit odd, but, but uh, I have always enjoyed my time of resting, uh, of sleeping, because those were times, maybe that's the only time God could get me still enough and quiet enough that he could talk to me. I, I don't know, but, but I, I would, uh, for, for so many years, I have been a dreamer and I've loved having dreams because I knew that so many times those dreams had to do with somebody, some individual or a group, and usually with somebody that I knew personally, not always. But the incredible thing about it has been, though, that, that I knew God wanted to move and the purpose behind all of that, I figured out over the years, one of the primary purposes for those dreams in my case there were other reasons, but one of the primary purposes for those dreams in my life has been so that I knew to pray specifically right then for somebody. It could be more than one person. Uh, I've had several dreams where it was about individual churches. Uh, God would just, I would have a dream and the name of the church would be spelled out and, and various things. I knew God was telling me to pray. And as time went on, and then I began to actually look a little deeper into the specific things that were happening, I would find that, that uh, uh, when I would check things out and I would look a little closer at what was going on in that individual's life, I would find out that they were going through something that they needed God to move in their lives. It, it fascinates me how... How God will move even through a dream. But here again, the, the sermon today is not about dreams, but, but uh, just in a way of an introduction. I wanted to share that with you because of the link there with the subject today of prayer. Because when we pray, as I shared with you a moment ago, the Spirit of Almighty God moves on your behalf. And when you pray, it touches somebody else. It may touch you. It may touch your neighbor, it may touch your husband, your wife, your child, or whatever, your grandchild, but God moves when God's people pray. Can I get an amen today in this place? But here again, that's the purpose. And, and so last Friday night, I, I had a dream about a specific young girl, a young girl, a really young girl, and, uh, and anyway, if, if I call the name, and by the way, she's not here in the service, so it's it's... It's nobody's kid that I'm looking at right now. Uh, but anyway, I, I had this dream about this specific young girl. And it went on and on and on. And it, uh, I, I can't tell because of, of who it was and the nature of the dream. I can't tell you all a lot of the details about the dream and, and where it was all said and things like that. 
But I will tell you that when I woke up, well, actually, while I was still in the dream, and then when I woke up from the dream, I had this urgent feeling that I needed to pray for her right then. And so I did. Uh, I prayed for her. I, I don't even know. I think sometimes, y'all say, well, you're way out there on theology this morning. I think sometimes even, I think I pray in my sleep sometimes. I really do. And, and anyway, but I began to pray for this young girl. And then I, I prayed and I prayed and I prayed and I woke up and I prayed and I prayed. And, and when you would think you would be finished praying, I still felt that urgency in my heart to pray some more. And so I prayed again. And I prayed again, and I prayed again until I, I felt some sort of release there. And so here again, that goes with the sermon today, because as we read in John chapter number 5, we're going to talk today about prayer and how prayer influences things around us, how prayer changes your life. I've got a good friend in Washington State. He's probably watching my live stream today. And he says one of the incredible, incredible things about prayer is that it costs you absolutely nothing to do it. But it can change the world. It can change a life. Let's go to James chapter 5, verse number 13, where scripture says, Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing psalms. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise him up and if he has committed sins he will be forgiven verse 16 confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed the effective fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much now he talks about Elijah verse number 17 Elijah was a man with a nature just like ours you look at yourself. Look at your neighbor right now. We all have a nature about us. Elijah was a man with a nature just like ours, and he prayed. How did he pray? He prayed earnestly. And he prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three years and six months. Can you imagine that? Three and a half years? But verse number 18 says, and he prayed again. And he prayed again. And when he did, the Bible says that the heaven gave rain and the earth produced its fruit. I really wonder as I was going over the message this morning, I began to think about that verse and how the heaven gave rain and the earth produced its fruit. And I wondered, Sister Pat, if perhaps that was prophetic for where we're at today in America and in the world. If God's people would pray, if God's people would seek Him, if God's people would pray, if God's people would reach out and touch Almighty God on behalf of what's going on in the world today, I believe that the heaven that God will produce rain, and I believe that the earth that God's people will produce fruit, and I believe that the earth can be touched with the glory of God. Amen. But just a thought today, a question for you. Is it just me, or do some of you also think that prayer in society today is treated more like an add-on than it is a necessity. I mean, it's just that thing that we are supposed to do. You know, not th that we really do it so much, but it's that thing we're supposed to do. And so here again, it's like an add-on. It's like, you know, is prayer really a focal point in our lives, or is it, for us personally, is it sometimes based more upon tradition and duty than it is communication, talking to Almighty God. You know what I'm talking about. We're supposed to pray. We're supposed to pray over our food. We're supposed to pray our bedtime prayers. We're supposed to pray over the offering. We're supposed to pray when somebody kindly asks us to do so. 
Well, that's what we're supposed to do. So we say a little, now lay me down to sleep. I... Amen? Well, we do it because we're supposed to do it. Maybe it, it could be that in this age that we're living in right now even, that God is calling people to do more than just a traditional prayer, more than just a duty, more than just something that seems like, well, this is what people expect me to do. Maybe it's time for God's people to rise up and be the prayer warriors that we are called to be and we will see heaven and earth shaken for the glory of God and we will see God's love and God's presence be poured out by His Spirit upon this earth. Many times it's like we're just paying homage though. While it's, the prayers are totally disconnected from our lives. Your prayers matter. Amen. I, I could look around. I, I, know, I know most of you very personally. And I, I know some of the things about you because of your prayer life. I know, I know people that pray. And sometimes I reach out to certain people because I know they pray. Some of the people in my life, uh, it, it's been amazing to me. People that pray, I want them to pray for me. People that just do their duty. My microphone working today, is it? Have I got a microphone anywhere? If I want somebody to pray, I'm going to reach out to a prayer warrior. Amen? Amen. Amen. Because I will tell you, when you pray, something good happens. Amen? Amen. I would submit to you this morning that prayer is more than a tribute. Prayer is more than a tribute. It's more than a tradition. It's more than an obligation. Prayer is a spiritual dynamic approved by God. Are you with me today? Amen. It means the bringing of the divine, holy, perfect will of our all-knowing, all-powerful, and ever-present God down to individual lives of needy people right here on planet Earth. Here's what I know. I know that when we pray that God moves and therefore when we have a need and we pray and we trust God with faith, I know right then that God moves on my behalf or God moves on your behalf. God can take care of all sorts of things. You say, well, you don't know what I've been going through. You don't know what it's like to deal with the stuff I deal with in my life. I might. I was looking for Sister Sandra Yates a while ago. She's not able to be here today, but I was thinking about her testimony. Well, we've had these testimonies the last two or three weeks. I was thinking, thinking about the, the testimony that she gives of pressing on in the midst of it, even as the song said this morning, if I don't feel it, if I don't see it, I still know that God is pressing on, so I'm going to press on. God didn't go to sleep and leave me out here. All by myself, God is still moving on my behalf. Would you give him praise this morning in this place? Prayer is one, you know this, but prayer is one of the dominant themes in Scripture. And as I read to you out of the book of James a while ago, we saw that prayer was mentioned over and over and over again. In verses 13 through 18, you can see that there is this connection between the writing of James and the subject of prayer. And you'll find the word uh, prayer or pray or something used at least once in every verse. So James, for him, he felt like prayer was a big deal. And we find that if we look at Jesus Christ even, if we go to our ultimate example, we know that prayer was a big deal. Even Jesus would go away to pray. So no doubt, Brother Lindell, prayer is a big thing, isn't it? It's a necessary thing. It is a necessity in our lives. If we're going to live victoriously, amen? Consider this for just a minute. God has a plan for what needs to happen in our lives. God has a plan for what needs to happen in your life, Brother Jamie. He has a plan for that. He's already mapped it out. He already has figured it out. You know, sometimes people talk about the devil's plans and the architectural scheme and the heavens and all this. I've come to tell you that that doesn't compare to the plan of God that he has for your life. Amen? So then we have God's will. God's will is what he determines to do. But it can happen and does happen in one of two ways. 
Have y'all ever heard of the uh, divine will of God and the permissive will of God? Have you ever heard of His conditional will and His unconditional will? Let me talk to you about that for just a second. God's unconditional will is when He decides what will happen irrespective of what anybody else does. God has chosen, I'm going to do this. He's even chosen when he's going to do it. Why can he do that? How can he do that? Because he is God. If you ever want to see something big, just think in your mind and in your heart for just a minute about how big God is. And God has a divine will and he has also a, an unconditional will, things that he is going to do. If you go back to the book of Genesis that I made reference to a while ago, he didn't ask anybody if he could fix the earth all up. Make it all pretty, did he? If you go to the book of Revelation, he did not ask anybody's permission whether or not we could have a new heavens and a new... He didn't ask anybody if one day Jesus could come back, the very Son of God, come back and the saints be raptured out of here. He didn't ask anybody's permission about that. He said, it's going to happen. He didn't ask anybody, well, can I include healing? Can I include deliverance? Can I include all this in the plan of God? He didn't ask it. Can I include peace and joy and hope and happiness? He didn't ask, can I include all of that? He said, I'm going to do that for the people of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. That is his unconditional will. It is not conditioned upon our actions or non-actions because he sovereignly has decided that he will do it all by himself. Are you all with me? But God's conditional will is different because God's conditional will needs us. There are many things that he's decided to not let happen until he gets cooperation from earth. From us. Are y'all with me today? There's many things that God has decided he's not going to bring from heaven until we line up and we pray and we touch heaven for some certain situation. Amen? We've got to cooperate with God's design and with God's desire. And if we're not cooperating with him, it's not going to happen. Right. It's conditioned upon us being a part and us acting with God. That's why many times, I think I mentioned this a couple of weeks ago maybe, even there's sometimes we're asking God to do something for us. And sometimes I think God is saying, well, why don't you just do it for yourself? I've given you the opportunity and the power to do it yourself. Amen, somebody. There are many things that he has decided not to do until there is intercession from his people. Amen? For example, we know that it's God's will that all the earth be saved. But all the earth is not going to be saved until all the earth accepts Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. You say, well, that's very narrow-minded. I will tell you that's the truth of the Word of God right there. Jesus Christ is the only way that we're ever going to make heaven. That we'll ever spend eternity with Almighty God. Give Him praise today, if you will. So in some cases, God has a will, but it's tied to a condition. Many things in my life and many things in your life are tied to God's conditional will. That's why we need to pray. That's why we need to stand in the gap. That's why we need to make up a hedge. Amen. That's why we need to get in line with God so that the lack that we experience in life, the trouble that we experience in life is overcome and overshadowed by the presence of Almighty God. And God moves on our halves and he brings miracles to, pa to pass for us. Amen. Give him praise again if you will. So one of the primary mechanisms that God uses to bring about things in life is prayer. Very simple, really, today. In the previous chapter in the book of James, we're not going to turn there today for the sake of time, but James wrote, you ask and you do not receive because you ask amiss. You ask, but you don't receive because you ask amiss. There are certain things that God wants to give us, but there are certain things that we're, where we're asking with the wrong motive. Amen. If, if, if I was to ask God to make me rich, 
I believe God wants to prosper his people. I do. 100%. I believe God wants to prosper his people. But if I was asking that God would make me rich just so that I could enjoy life and never bless anybody else with my blessing, I think I've asked amiss. Amen. Thank you for those three amens this morning. Amen. Amen. There are also things that God wants to provide for us, but we never bother to ask. Um, I, I've watched people over the years, and I've watched how the people that pray, and they pray, and they're people of prayer. Now, Brother Lindo, he, he's, uh, he's the guy I always go to that, uh, to talk about prayer because Brother Lindo says, you know, this is how I pray. I just talk to Sister Bonnie. It's really the one that says it. She says, well, Lindo, he just, he just talks to God just like he would talk to somebody else. Now, there are people I understand that, that believe God only talks in King James. I get that. Uh, but God talks to me in just Polk County English. He already knows our heart anyway, and, and I, I started not to say that. I'm going to go ahead and say I think God even has used the word ain't with me before. <laughs> I mean, God, God talks to me like I talk to other people. Amen. Now, for those of you that I just offended, I'm really sorry. Here's the deal. You and I need to cooperate with God, and we do that through prayer. Because prayer enables the plan. If God has a plan for us, we need that plan to be enabled, and that happens through prayer. So prayer enables the plan through two-way communication with God. Have you ever been in a conversation with somebody and it was only one way? It's better if it's two ways. It's better when you talk to somebody that they talk back to you. Amen. Y'all with me today? The goal of prayer is to draw what's in heaven to earth, what is available from God Almighty. The goal of prayer is to bring that to where we live, to where we reside, to where we exist. The goal of prayer is that that the plan of God that he has for our lives, no matter our age, whether we're young ladies like right over here, or whether we're older folks like, no, I'm not going to name any names today. Brother Lindell, I was not looking at you when I said that. The goal of prayer is that what God has purposed in our lives would come to pass. The goal of prayer is that God obviously does have a plan and we obviously should want that to come to pass. And we also realize, though, that if we're not real careful, we veer off to the right or to the left. I'll tell you what, I'm glad that some people prayed for me years ago and some people pray for me still today. Because I never want to go right or left. I always want to go right into the plan of God. But prayer is important. Prayer is vitally important. Paul said in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17, he said this. He said, he said that we are to pray without ceasing pray without ceasing now if if i said sister heidi i want you to help me out with an illustration this morning if i said sister heidi i want you to do me a favor i want you to i want you to breathe without ceasing <laughs> breathe without ceasing brother jamie would you breathe without ceasing you breathe all the time all day long sister Rhonda, you all day long? Why do you do that? Because if you don't breathe without ceasing, you'll die. I'm glad God put that in me to breathe without ceasing. So Paul says that we are to pray without ceasing. Now we've got to be careful here because we, we try to figure all this out. Try to, try to get theological with it all. I believe God just wants a relationship with us. He wants us to talk to him. He wants us to be available because he's always available. He's always available. And so when I'm talking to him, I know, and I'm going to go back to the illustration a minute ago, I know if I have two-way communication with God, I know I'm not going to die. Amen. 
And I'm not going to get weak spiritually. I should have got a better amen than that. But if we view, if we visualize prayer as an event, then we think, well, it's my duty and so I'm going to pray. We, we start talking about it uh, in the realm of time. If I pray five minutes, well, I've done good. It's, it's my event for the day. I, I've set aside five minutes, I'm going to pray. And then, well, it's just an event. It's my duty, so... So, so, oh, I'm going to do better. I, I, pray, I prayed five minutes, and, and so, oh, let me see what time it is. I believe I can do five more minutes. Yeah, five more minutes, five more. And so, ten minutes now. I believe I, I, I believe I can go 20. It's not about how much time you spend in prayer. It's about the relational communication that you make while you're there. Have you created a relationship with your prayer time? That's good preaching whether anybody ever caught that or not this morning. Have you created moments? Have you created a series of moments where it's not just you speaking words, but it's you, it's you talking by faith to Almighty God, knowing that God not only answers prayer, but God cares about the prayer. I'm not even sure if that was good English, but it works. God cares about you when you pray. Amen. And so if God cares about you, which he does, and God wants to answer our prayers, and God wants to bring heaven to earth, God wants to touch your body, God wants to touch your child, God wants to do all these things, you can be assured that when you pray and when you ask in the will of God, God will answer every single time. You say, well, when's he going to answer? I've been praying. I've been praying. When's he going to answer? God, <laughs> there was a song we used to sing. That he's an on-time God. Yes, he is. He's an on-time God. Yes, he is. I mean, give God a better praise for that this morning. Amen. <laughs> Prayer is a, it's meant to be a lifestyle. Not just an event. Are y'all with me? When prayer is a lifestyle, time isn't as important because the relationship overshadows the time spent. Now, I have no problem whatsoever. As a matter of fact, I encourage you to have time that is dedicated to prayer. It might be when you get off work. It might be when you get up in the morning. It might be 10 o'clock in the morning. Uh, it might be whatever. I'll be at lunch. I encourage you, nothing wrong with having a set time that you can specifically pray, but I encourage you also, according to the words of the Apostle Paul, to pray without ceasing. In other words, God can speak to you when you're in Walmart. Do you know God can, even, this is a miracle, God can even speak to you when you're in the self-checkout line at Walmart. God can speak to you when you're dreaming. God can speak to you going down the road. God can speak to you. Whenever God wants to speak to you because you have an open line of communication with him. If there's something that God wants out of us concerning prayer time, I think it is that. It is open communication that is relational, it is quality, and it is going on all the time. In other words, I can be out there, I can be digging potatoes, I can be whatever, I can be mowing the yard, but God can still talk to me because God wants it to be perpetual. His spirit lives on the inside of us. His spirit doesn't come and go in our lives. We are filled with his spirit. Therefore, that relationship should be a constant in our lives. Go ahead and give him praise this morning. If you will. When you go into another country, they're going to ask you to show your passport. Is that right? Those of you that travel, the passport gives you permission to go into this new place, this new realm, this new territory, uh, this new country. If, if, you, if you lose your passport, you have big troubles. Amen. God has given everybody this, 
This is going to sound a little bit odd, but God has given everybody a toll-free number called Relationship with Jesus Christ so that we can reach out to him anytime, anytime we have a need in our lives. In a second, you can be about to have an accident on the highway, and all of a sudden you can reach out and you can call upon his name, and all of a sudden God will be right there in your midst. Amen? Amen. He'll be there every single time. But that, that relationship and that passport, if you will, is designed to give you permission to leave earth and to enter into a new realm. Ain't it? Amen? Amen? Through the mechanism of prayer, we change locations. When we have open communication with God, it changes your and my changes our location. I'm not just operating from the physical realm anymore. I don't just have things solid around me. All of a sudden, I've reached into the spiritual through the things of God, through the spirit of God. All these things. This is, by the way, this is not new age theology I'm teaching you. This is about God wanting to connect through relationship because of his son and through his spirit into your life every single day. Every single day. I love Isaiah chapter 65 and verse 24. Where scripture says, it shall come to pass. Say that with me today. It shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they're still speaking, I will hear. While they're still speaking, I will will hear. You and I are so limited right here. We can do certain things in the physical realm, but I will tell you we are so very limited. But when we reach out to God, to the God who hears before we ever finish talking, let me just share this. Let, let, me, let me share this with you real quick. For those of you that have thought in your life, well, God didn't see that coming to me. Something happened in your life and boy, God didn't see that. I've got news for you. God saw it coming before you ever knew about it. Amen. So he already made a plan. He already made a way of escape. He already made a way through. He already made a way to sustain you. He already made a way because through the grace of his son, Jesus Christ, God is there for you. Amen. Give him praise again if you would. When you and I pray, when we communicate with God, when we call upon God, we are calling upon him to release something to us that was already predestined for us. Yes. God has something for you. He's had a plan. We've already established that. We've already predetermined that it is available for you. Now we, we need to work with him, amen? Amen. You remember when Jesus and the disciples fed the 5,000 men plus women and children? And they found this, I mean, it was a, a large task in the natural, it was. So they've got all these people, maybe 15,000 people, however many it ended up being, we don't know exactly, but they found a little boy with five loaves of bread and two fish. Now, if, if that was you and you had to feed even this group, you'd be going... Well, I don't know how we're going to get that done. Matthew, Mark, and Luke say that Jesus looked up to heaven and he blessed the loaves and fishes. John says that he gave thanks. So Christ Jesus took what he had in the physical and then recognizing the need for a miracle, he looked up to heaven for an answer that was already there waiting to come down. It was all, did you get that? It was already available, ready to be asked for and that he would be thanked for even in advance. It was waiting to be released. So the disciples simply distributed what the supernatural had already provided. That's a good place to shout amen right there. Amen. Did you catch that? The disciples, they didn't just do so much. They just distributed what God had already supernaturally decided, I'm going to bless those people with. Because he loved them. Amen? Let's go back to James chapter 5 real quick. I have three minutes. 
till 12. I remember Brother Lindell up here preaching one time. He looked at his watch and 20 minutes till. And anyway, I got 20 more minutes. He said he didn't know his watch had stopped. <laughs> James chapter 5 and verse number 13 said, is any, the question, is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Suffering means that we're going through a difficult period of time. If I was to ask today for a show of hands, there'd be people in this room, people watching online, people up in the balcony that would say, yeah, I'm going through a difficult period of time. Something is hurting you. It could be physical hurt. It could be relational hurt. It could be financial hurt. It could be circumstantial hurt. All you know is that you're in pain and you are suffering right now. And you need help. You need God. I, I know that there are people uh, in any service, any given service where we come together, there are going to be people who are having difficult times. Scripture gives you a very direct word for that. Let him pray. Let him pray. Let me just say it this way. You must pray. You have to pray. If you're going to be victorious, amen. God put that in order. If life has fallen upon you this morning in a very harsh way, you need to pray. I need to pray. Because that's the plan of God for you. That's the plan of God for my life is that I would reach out and connect with the creator of the universe, the one who put breath into you. I just sense there's even someone here this morning that, that would say, but, but what I've got to go through and all these details that have got to get worked out in my life before I can be happy and before I can be victorious and before I can have joy in my life, uh, I don't know, there's no way God... Yes, it is. Through faith, God can do in an instant. God can do in a moment what we could spend a lifetime toiling to do for ourselves because God loves you that much and He is that powerful. Amen? Amen. Amen. Pain is always an invitation to prayer. So if you have trouble, if you have pain, it's an opportunity for the God of heaven to move on your behalf. Amen? Verse 14 says, Anyone among you sick, let him call for the elders of the church. Let him pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. He will be forgiven. Have you ever felt so low, so sick, so down in the dumps? that you can barely pray for yourself. That's when you need to reach out. You need to have people that you're connected to. Sure, we need to pray, but we also have these times when we need to reach out to somebody. We need to have a friend. We need to have a friend that knows how to pray, a friend that cares, amen? amen. James says we can call for the help, for help. We can call for the elders of the church. We can call for our friends and neighbors who know how to pray. What does that mean? We just simply call for backup. Amen? Amen? We call for backup. I'll tell you for a fact today that no matter what you go through in your life, you can, <laughs> there's a show on TV where you can call a friend for the answer. Y'all ever watch that? I will tell you today that you can call a friend, you can look around, you can connect with somebody in the church, your neighbors or whatever, you can call a friend. And you can always call on God, and God will always show up on your behalf. Would you stand with me today? Scripture tells us of a paralytic man in Mark chapter number 2. He could not get to Jesus by himself. He couldn't. He just was not physically able to do that. And so four guys, four friends, I guess, decided they would help him. So they picked him up and they carried him on his bed. They carried him to the place that Jesus was preaching, but the place was just, I mean, can you imagine when Jesus preached? I mean, the place... 
I mean, it, it was this was before social distancing, but even if there would have been social distancing, social distancing would never have worked because everybody's going to crowd in there. They're going to breathe on each other and all that kind of stuff. They probably even shake you now. I don't know if they shook hands or not. But Mark chapter 2 verse 5 says this. Because the, the guys, they, they couldn't get in, so they made a hole in the roof and they dropped him down to where Jesus was preaching. And Mark chapter 2 and, and verse 5 says this. It says, when Jesus saw their faith. I mean, they have let him down. I mean, they were intense on this guy getting his miracle. When it's, It says when Jesus saw their faith, he spoke to the paralytic. He said, son, your, your sins are forgiven you. When Jesus saw their faith, not the faith of the paralytic, the faith of those letting him down. Skip down to verse 11. Jesus said, I say to you, arise, take up your bed, and go to your house. Oh, I would have loved to have been there. But I can kind of be there because I can visualize that myself. Verse 12 says, immediately he arose. He took up his bed and went out of the presence, in the presence of them all, so that all were amazed and glorified God, saying, we never saw anything like this. As they used to say it back in the 90s, we never done it like this before. We never saw anything like this. Your time communicating with God really does matter. It really does matter. It'll change your life and change somebody else's life. Let me ask you a question today. How many of you, do you feel a little weary? Let's see your hand. A little weary. How many of you feel a whole lot weary? You can pray. God will move. And I want you to know if you're too weary to pray, there's somebody around you that will pray with you and for you. And God will move. Wow. God will yes, move when we pray. Father, thank you for this good day that you've given us. Lord, I thank you today that you always give us the strength to go on. I know, Lord, that sometimes we get tired and some of, Lord, your most, faith, most faithful servants, they get tired from time to time and even weary. Lord, I thank you that, God, you're always still there, still moving, still loving. You're still making a way where there seems to be no way. Even when we can't see it, even when we can't feel it, even when we can't reach out and feel like we touch the miracle, God, you're still there. So, Lord, this day, we just come to give you praise and Lord, also this day we've come to pray. We've come to pray. God, because we recognize there are needs today that can only be met by the presence and power of your Holy Spirit moving upon a life today. That's the only way it can happen. Lord, we have doctors and we're thankful for them. We have various other things but God there are some things that only you can do so Lord God we're asking you right now that even in these next few moments God I'm asking you that you would move in a powerful way with no one looking around I just want to ask you a question are you here today and you would simply say pastor I need prayer I need prayer thank you thank you thank you thank you sir thank you ma'am Thank you, sir. I need prayer. Thank you, ma'am. I need prayer. Anybody else? Anybody else? Thank you. 
Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I need prayer. One of the incredible things, look at me for just a moment if you would. One of the incredible things about God is, I sort of mentioned this a while ago, but social distancing or not, God can divinely touch you right where you're at. The, the phrase that's so often used is there's no distance in prayer. I want us to believe today, there were a lot of hands went up in this room, and I'm sure many who are watching today, there are a lot of, a lot of needs out there. I want you to know God can touch you right where you're at. We just need to have faith that God would do that, and then we pray. Amen. Amen. Linda Wayne. Amen. If you raised your hand today and you said, I need prayer, I want you to slip it up right now, right where you're at. And I want everybody else, I want you to look around. You can stay right where you're at. But I want you, if you want to stretch your hands forth that way or however you want to do it, that's fine. But I want you to pray specifically for that person. It could be that you don't even know who they are. You don't even know their name. Pray for them anyway. Ask their name later. Connect with them later. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, Lord, we come before you right now. And Father, from one side of the sanctuary to the other, and those watching today by live stream, Lord God, we pray, according to Scripture, we pray, God, that you would touch lives or those that need a physical touch in their body. We ask you right now, God, that you would grant that physical need, that touch right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. There are those here today, Lord God, and those that are watching that need a, a touch. They're just weary. Lord, I'm asking you that you would do that, that you would strengthen them, that you would lift them up, raise them up. Lord God, even now, Lord, just a season that somebody's been in that's been so difficult. Lord God, I'm asking you for a miracle in their life right now. A miracle in their lives right now. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God, I thank you that even a heart condition right now is being healed. I thank you, Lord God, Lord, that you're moving in a powerful way. Lord, I thank you that there is nothing that is impossible or too hard for God. So, Lord God, we believe you right now that you would heal diabetes. We believe you right now that you would heal cancer. We believe you right now, Lord God, that you would just touch something going on in the brain right now. Lord, we ask you to minister in a powerful way in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord God, we call upon you right now, Lord, to release your plan, your purpose, your desire on planet Earth, even as we pray. And Lord God, we just turn our hearts towards you right now. God, we ask you that even in these next few moments that you would, God, restore some things that have been broken and messed up. Restore some things that have been broken and messed up, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus. But Lord God, where there's a crack, Lord God, there's a, there's a healing that needs to take place. And Lord God, I ask you right now that you would just move in a powerful way. Lord God, we give you thanks. We give you praise. Lord, as we enter into your presence with thanksgiving and as we enter into, God, this time of prayer with just, Lord God, just honoring you, God, we give you thanks. Lord God, I thank you right now that, Lord, even the things that have happened in the past, Lord, that it seems that it has disrupted the present and the future, Lord God, we have faith today to believe that, Lord God, you'll smooth those things out. You will smooth those things out. Lord, do what we can't do. God, we just call upon you to do what we cannot do, what we cannot speak, what we cannot even come up with in our own, in our own minds. But God, by your spirit, you know every cell that needs to be healed. You know every, every issue that needs to be taken care of. And Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, we give you thanks for it. Thank you for blessing us with your presence. Lord, we stand in awe of you today. We stand in awe of you today. We give you praise in the mighty name of Jesus.